One issue to, to discuss uh, in terms of cannabis, and, and I've heard it brought up in some of the different states, and of course the federal government keeps saying, you know, what about our youth? What about the kids? We can't send a message that, you know, marijuana is medicine. I mean, you know, what kind of message does that send to the kids? They'll think it's, it's, it's good for you and they'll take it. And, and that, that's just a false statement. I mean, if anything, again, from a nursing perspective, Medications can be quite toxic. Medicines are for sick people. You take it if you have a problem, the medicine is to help you get back and better. So marijuana as medicine isn't saying, oh, it's good for you, take it. Vitamins might be good for you, take it. But insulin's a medicine, it doesn't mean take it. So that, that whole concept is, is a lie. The, the problem is we have smart kids. It's not a problem, excuse me, we have smart kids. So, so to to think that they can't figure this out, you've got a bigger problem when the kids figure out we're lying to them and that we're not, we don't have the compassion to give grandma, let grandma have her medicine or let my brother have this medicine, whatever it is. They can see that. That's the wrong message to kids that we don't care, that we don't, we don't care that it's good for you. We don't care that it helps. You can't have it. And by golly, we'll destroy your family or we'll, you know, we'll, you know, put you in prison, take the kids away, you know, whatever it may be for you violating this law. It's, that's the wrong message. Um, you know, from a kid's, right now today, what we're seeing is epidemic problems with prescription drugs. Kids are dying, they're getting a hold of it from mom and dad's medicine cabinet, or they're getting it online, uh, or somehow, you know, convincing some docs to give it to them, you know, making up something, whatever, but they're taking prescription drugs, mostly opiates, but sometimes adding your Valium or Ativan, you know, just mixing pills and killing themselves. And, and a lot of that is because they're not taught. Uh, our, our focus in the war on drugs is there are good drugs and bad drugs, and that's stupid. You know, drugs can't be good or bad. It's, it's more of a, an issue of how they're used. And patients, all patients, kids especially, need to understand how to use a medicine, um, how to use any kind of drug that if you're gonna use it, you have to understand how it's gonna work and if, you know, how is it gonna affect you and what dose should you take and can you mix it with anything? And so once they have a good understanding there, they'll make better decisions. Um, but to just decide that medicine's good or bad is, is, that's just not how it works. Something might be bad for you, but very good for me. It's all about uh, education. You know, just think of penicillin. You're allergic to it, it'll kill you. Uh, might be life-saving for someone else, you know, with a pneumonia or something. So. Yeah, it's all about that. I want to say one more thing about the conferences. Um, clearly, education is, is the theme. I mean, it's the primary purpose of getting good science out and, and usable science for clinicians to take and, and apply in their practice. Um, but the other thing is getting all these people together, they network. Um, and in so doing, uh, I, I feel real proud. I think one of, there's two little side things that have, have developed. I shouldn't call them little, I guess. But uh, the American Academy of Cannab Cannabinoid Medicine, AACM, has been formed by a lot of the physicians coming to the conference. And, and they're realizing that with this endocannabinoid system and with all the ways that cannabis can be useful to patients, that's a specialty. It's a huge body of knowledge. It's a specialty in and of itself. And so they've, they've gotten together and looking at cannabinoid medicine, use, the use of cannabinoids in modern medicine. A little bit slower, but I, I must say we've been thinking about it for a long time. Nurses are coming to it, and, and there's been a core group of us who've been, been looking at this for a long time, and we've just recently formed the American Cannabis Nurses Association, the ACNA, and we chose to stay with cannabis. Again, it kind of goes to the nursing perspective, but we're looking at this plant, and, and I guess the nursing perspective is more of a health perspective in, um, in, in terms of modern medicine, instead of looking at the disease model, we try to look at the health, and if someone is sick, the nurse's role is more like, how do you live with that? How do, we, how do you improve the quality of your life living with this disease? Um, how do we fight it? How can, you know, how can we help you feel better? How can we help you maintain good health? Whatever, but we focus more on health. So cannabis in itself, as a plant, fits in wonderfully. Uh, you know, we, we're learning about the endocannabinoid system and the plant, but it also helps us look at the nourishment from the, the hemp oil, uh, the cannabis plant itself. The oil that it gives is, is one of the best oils we can eat, and it will surpass flaxseed oil or olive oil in terms of getting your essential fatty acids. This is a huge thing 
um, good tasting oil. You can make you know, and you can make other things out of it. The seeds are just tasty little snacks, etc. But the idea that here's this food, not psychoactive, but a great food product out there that all of America is not getting. And that's essential for just basic good health for all of us. When we're eating trans fatty acids, I mean, we're getting chemicals we shouldn't be consuming. And here's this wonderful source that is banned. And then you look at the other cousin to cannabis, but the hemp plant, when it's grown for its fiber and, and, the, and the, the biomass, whether it's being used as a fuel or as, a, as the fiber for rope, for fabrics, for building materials, for all these things that are environmentally good. So I'm looking at it as a nursing perspective, health-wise, we, you know, we, we're kind of trained to look at that. We send a patient home. What's their home environment like? What's, you know, are they eating well and what's the environment? And, and cannabis is just this thing that helps in almost every way. You can see a positive from it. Um, so we're really pleased that you know, it is a specialty. The American Can uh, Nurses Association recognized uh, that cannabis did have medical value. So back in 2003, they first issued their resolution following many state nurses associations who validated cannabis as medicine and issued papers. And they look at these things every five years, and in 2008, they looked at it again and, and reissued it, saying, yeah, we, we believe this is good medicine. So the ACNA, we will be, it'll take a while as we, as we get going and get all our paperwork done and, and, and that sort of thing, but our long-term goal is to literally be, um, I'm going to say blessed, that's not it, but uh, confirmed as a legitimate sub, uh, specialty in nursing under the ANA, being recognized as a subspecialty. So we'll do the paperwork and, and that's our goal. And I think you know, the ANA is open to it um, and we clearly are a, like I say, it is a specialty. It's, it's, we can teach nurses in any other specialty, pediatrics, they need to know how to use it. Uh, pulmonary specialist nurses need to know about cannabis and how it can affect them. Uh, endocrinology dealing with patients who have diabetes, you know, maybe they need to know about this. The pain clinics, you know, we can just help um, in almost every other specialty of nursing to bring the knowledge of cannabis to them to help them improve their practice. So it's really kind of exciting times in that regard.